Hello, hello, hello friends. It's freezing, hence the reason why I'm all bundled up like this. But we are back, 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 back again with another book for the Smash Recommends say well the friends recommend series but the smash edition <laughs> because as i explained in previous iterations of this don't know if by the time this goes out chloe's will be live but i'm doing the raven cycle for chloe's i've done the three current ft luca releases for um gems choice of author slash series this time for Smash's recommendation, I am doing a Throne of Glass, and you can't really see this because it's in a dust jacket thing, but I'm doing the Throne of Glass series. So I do have a spoiler vlogs for Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight up already, and this is Assassin's Blade, which is the five novellas for the Throne of Glass series. And this is a reread for me, the same as the Throne of Glass was, and I know pains are coming. I know pain is are coming. And I'm not okay. Era Fire is Smash's favourite book of the series. So I'm really excited to get to that. But first I have to get through the pain of this. And if you've read this, you'll know when the pain hits. And you'll know what I've got to look forward to. Is that the phrase we use? Are we using looking forward to? I don't think we'll don't think we'll lose that. Um use that. Um you'll know what what's gonna hit me in the near future so yeah I'm just gonna dive straight into the first one and I've literally just checked what it's called and I can't remember what it's called I think it's called The Assassin and the Pirate Lord give me a second while I check um yeah The Assassin and the Pirate Lord is the first one and it just reminds me what that's about I did forget it's because one of these stories sticks in your mind so much, that's the one you know. And there's another one with a character that comes into it. That I don't know I'm being vague, because I'll give you spoilers as we go along. For those of you who don't know, these are spoilery vlogs. I'm probably one of the last people in the whole of the fantasy romance loving universe that's re that hasn't read this full series. But we're here, so... Yeah, there's a couple of stories in this that there's like a, um, a character that, that really sticks out for me and something that happens that really sticks out for me. So we'll get to that as we go along, but the Pirate Lord is just reminds me of something as well. So this will be fun. I've started to read this. I've read the first couple of pages and I thought I'd just do like a proper intro. You'll have seen some B-roll of me making a nice brew. I might, even though it's like 10 o'clock at night, I've not really eaten much today. So I might make myself some hot Weetabix and just chill out and listen to the first book of this. It's only like 76 pages. I'll see how I feel with the guys so like the the tiredness that I'm feeling. Because I've not been feeling the best, so I'm gonna try and get an early night tonight. Um so sorry if I sound a bit nasally. But yeah. Join me in the tumultuous roller coaster that is Assassin's Blade. Yay. So, I've finished book one, novella one, story one, and <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I know that people have said, like, you read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and, like, you, The Assassin's Blade in that order, rather than reading The Assassin's Blade first, because you find out more about Selena, Selena, um, in the first two books, which is fair you do, but in this particular story, in these stories, I really don't like her. So <laughs> my opinion on her hasn't changed from when I read it the first time. And the first time I read this this, this book, I read it before I'd read this one of glass. Now I'm reading it after. I can understand why she is the way that she is but it doesn't mean I have to like her so in the pirate lord the assassin in the pirate lord it sort of introduces you to her when she's 16 and she is 
already that point Adeline's best assassin and she's Aberrant. I literally just said his name. I literally just said his name. Aberrant's second in command, like the next one who's due to like when he's unalived she'll be the head of the assassins. That And um, he sort of introduces a guy called Sam who in her mind is jealous that she's number one under um, under the, the main guy and he's not. We don't see Sam's POV at this point um, or anything like that. We find out there's a guy called Ben who she was really close to who's died and again that's just reminded me of things that happened later on in this but he sort of sets it up that there's like this sort of rivalry between these two because he wants to be first and whatnot. Although he doesn't come out and say it, he just challenges her a lot. She is very arrogant, she is very much like I'll do what I want and say what I want because I'm, you know, his protege and I, I just, I don't like her. I love Sam from the moment I meet him but I really don't like Selena as she is in this story. Now, I'm like I said, I'm not discounting what she's been through. She was, she became an assassin, she became an assassin because it was become an assassin or die. And obviously in that situation, you're gonna become the assassin. And there's a certain type of behavior that she needs to display um, because she is a woman in a man's world. And obviously these men, Deadly as fuck, they're all older than her. She has to have some kind of... Uh, something about her so that they respect her. Anyone outside the, the guild, the group of men that, like, are the Adeline's assassins, don't know what she looks like because whenever she goes out in public, she covers herself and she covers her face. And we basically went to this pirate lord, her and Sam had to go, and, and they thought they were collecting or arranging a payment for um, the the debt that this pirate had accrued. But when they got there, they realised that it was actually like a business deal to get slaves. This then set in motion Selena making up this plan in the head. Eventually, when Sam found out exactly what was going on, he went on board with it. And it, it you do see that within this story that a side of her that does care, so she does care about Sam when, you know, we think something bad's happened to him or the way that he sort of like hints at when she looks at him and stuff, she does care about him but it still doesn't negate the fact that she's just really arrogant and I really don't like her in this. I do love the Selena that she becomes in Throne of Glass and goes into Crown of Midnight, like that Selena. I really like as a character this one she's annoying and it's very much a case of like I'm Adeline's best assassin and yes she's a good assassin she shows some of her assassin skills but she also shows that her arrogance hinders her because she underestimated Rolf the pirate lord I think that she thought that she he was she was better than him and in some ways she was but she really did underestimate his skill and got herself into trouble. I'm, obviously I'm going to continue reading and seeing if I want to reread my opinion changes of her as the stories progress. We'll, we'll see. But she's very, very arrogant and it kind of pisses me off. Not going to lie. Like I said, I know she has to have a certain kind of bravado about her. She can't be all like meek and like because she's an assassin and a 16 year old assassin in a man's world, do you know what I mean? But there's a line and she crosses that line a lot and she's so... It does, it does mention that she has to pay all this money back and all these um, for, for everything that she's been given for the life that she's got but she goes about all these materialistic things that she's got she looks down on Rolf as a pirate lord because he doesn't have that which is part of the reason why I think she underestimated him and she just seems at this point very materialistic very arrogant it feels like because she is Aberrant's protégé I think that's his name I'll put his name down here 
and and that she's like the next she's gonna be like head of the assassins when he um goes then she feels like she's a bit invincible in that respect so yeah we'll see we'll continue and we'll see what the crack is Okay, so I've now read The Assassin and The Healer and this is where we meet Irene which is a character that I really like because we get a bit of a taste of a different, I don't want to say different type of woman, like obviously we know that Irene is, is struggling. She's gone in a different direction to the ways that what Selena was, obviously Selena was a child when, or Selena, if you want to say it, was a child when she was given the option to like die or be an assassin. But it, it shows you how different, how differently some lives can turn out when you hit a hard time sort of thing. So although she, although Irene was a bit older, she ended up in a situation where she was working in this really shitty bar, being like manhandled and totally taken advantage of by a boss, like, mistreated, and it was just, it was horrible. We also saw a slightly different side of Selena, so, obviously up until now we've seen a little bit of a sort of softer side, well not softer side, like a little bit of something when she was like really worried about Sam in the first book, but we really saw that she does actually care about other people that are not just people that she knows so she'd seen that this girl could not defend herself and I, I, I get why she was angry but also I kind of don't agree with how she handled it I know that there's a very Selena at the time she was very much like you should be able to like why you sit why you stood there and letting people do this to you but I feel like she has very little tolerance for the fact that other people were raised differently to her which is another reason why I struggled to like her this first time round. I can see parts of her that she stuck around, she didn't need to stick around and she helped with uh, Ivy with some self defence moves, she sort of let her treat her arm and she wasn't stubborn about it and she wasn't like no I could do it myself. Um, well, she was at first, but I just think we did see a little bit of a different side to Selena. I just feel like she's very intolerant to other people's... Other people in general. <laughs> in Like, the way that... Like I said, the way that Irene reacted when the men came for her. Just because Selena wouldn't act like that and she just went into full on like assassin mode then doesn't mean that all women are going to be able to do that like if Irene didn't have the training, I keep wanting to call her that Irene didn't have the training for that so yeah I do like that's, that we're seeing different sides of her right now she does also mention that her and Sam are kind of friends now um, which oh god we'll get to that bit, we'll get to that bit I still stand by the fact that at this age I'm just not a fan of her and I'm well aware she's 16 and she's been raised a certain way and the same way that like for those of you who don't know like in Red Rising Darrow is only 16 when we start the books so there are certain things that you can kind of put down to being a teenager on hormones or whatever and certain reactions that people have you put it down to being a teenager rightly or wrongly at certain leniencies and certain you know you, you give them that don't you so, oh, well they're a teenager like they don't know any other way like she doesn't know any other way than being like a badass like show no emotion like fight just, just assassin and I do get I do like that we get to see some of her assassin ability like skills in this one and we're not just being told I am Ireland's best assassin I'm like show me show me how good you are and it kind of she kind of shows us that in this one but it also shows us that she's not totally invulnerable like she gets hurt so 
it's, it's not like I'm Arnold's best assassin and I, I never get injured and I'm just like the best of the best. She she does actually get hurt and like in the first book as well, her and Sam got caught so she can make mistakes. She is still human and I like to see that side of her. So just because you're the best at something doesn't mean that you can't fuck up and make mistakes and it doesn't mean that you, 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 you never get hurt or whatever. So I, I'm, I'm liking that sort of difference that we see. But also, I really just don't like her attitude in general. I can't get over that. I really... And for me, it's harder to say that now that I know her for like future books. So in my opinion, even though this was published after, I would still read this first because it gives you an idea of what she was like. And you can see how she's... You can then read her journey. Whereas, reading it after... You know she's changed, you know she's grown, you know what she's been through and reading this sort of, I'm I'm convincing myself now that she wasn't, I'm trying to convince myself that she wasn't that bad when she, when she was, she was really arrogant but because I know there's Elena from the, from like throwing a glass kind of midnight, I'm trying to, like in my brain it's just kind of like well that's not the Elena I know. So she can't really be that bad, but she is. She is really, she did get, she, you know, it was partly her fault that her and Sam got into trouble in, in the first one, first novella, because she did get arrogant and she she is, it is that is very much hers. I, I think, although people like to read really publish and order this, I think she, they should be read as these novellas first, because this is what happens before Throwing Up Glass and Crown of Night, and you get to see everything. And you get to feel things like we know from reading the other two books what what happens to some of the characters in this. We we know what happens at so I feel like this for me if I it, it wouldn't be a surprise. It when I first read this I was shocked at the thing that happens at the end of this. Whereas reading the first Donna Glass and Kind of Night first, you already know what's happened. To a specific character. Because I can't, can't go back and read this for the first time. I don't know how I would have, would have reacted to that if I'd have read it. Do you know what I mean? If I'd have read it that round, way around the first time. Would I have had the same visceral reaction when that happened? But I can't go back and change that now. I would like to know if, if someone who is as emotional as me. Read The Throne of Glass Crown of Midnight first. Then went back and read this. If they've had... The same reaction that I've had. In fact, Tori. Tori has never read this series before, so she's read it in this order. So I'm going to find out what her reaction was. And I will be back when I've finished the next one, which is, I can't remember the assassin or something else. I will come back and update you. same place as we were for the first two updates yes um but we're not going to talk about it okay okay i'm having a really shitty time and i just want to like chill on the weekend because i don't feel well so we're just gonna throw that away but i've just finished the assassin in the desert which is novella three in yes you won't care can't be asked straightening you up um in this one we do get to see more of the side of Elena, Elena, Selena, Selena, that um, is the part that I like that we see more of in Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. She kind of starts at this point feeling like, oh, so to, to see where she is. So because of what happened with her and Sam, she's been sent to the desert. To the desert, and she's been basically punished by. Arabin, 
to say like you need to go to this assassins like training camp I don't want to mispronounce the name so I'm not going to say it um, and you have to get a letter of approval from the master there and if you don't come back with a letter of approval you can find somewhere else to live basically but he beats the absolute crap out of her and makes Sam watch it before she leaves which makes me feel a little bit sick I forgot that it kind of <laughs> describes her being beaten with Sam watching I forgot that bit but when she's away she kind of think, feels herself feels feels herself thinking more about Sam and comparing this guy that she sees there to to Sam and saying like well uh, she starts to feel think of Sam in more of a romantic way or it seems to be portraying it in that way and she's wondering if Sam feels the same way about her and like it's sort of showing you the difference and she's, she's got there and she's realising that although she is like a renowned assassin in Adeline she's not although in other parts of the world she's known she's not revered in the same way as she is and initially that sort of throws her off that nobody's looking at her and nobody's sort of carrying away from her the way that people she's used to but then she I think she kind of gets used to the fact that you know she has to work to gain the respect of the people that live there and obviously they all are assassins in their own right and whatnot she makes friends with a girl called Ansel so as I started reading I remember Ansel it reminded me of what happened things like this on a reread it's really sort of conflicting because I know that in the end Ansel betrays Selena so the whole time I'm sat there like oh my god like you're making friends with this girl you are sharing things with this girl you you're really great to care for her and she is just gonna drug you and dump you in the desert and expect you to ride off in but do you know what the, the thing is she said that she cares about Selena but she knows that it, if she'd have gone back with that layer of approval that was blank from the master there's Selena wouldn't have got out of there with a life or she would have been you know like I said to be told to live somewhere else and I feel like that's not something you do to someone you care about I don't think she thought that far ahead she just wanted her revenge she wanted the the soldiers that were promised to her by um, Beric and she just thought fuck everything else she tried to send Selena away because she cared about her a bit but she like I said I don't think she genuinely thought that through and yeah it was just it was a, it was a lot I didn't cry at this one I was just really sad because she's the only person that's really been like a friend and the when when the, so in this in this place a lot of people choose a vow of silence and a lot of people choose not to talk and the master has chosen not to talk for a long time but near the end after everything has gone down and Ansel's gone away and that whole thing goes down he start, he talks, he actually talks to her and it makes me feel really sad <laughs> that and I think it's great what he, what he does like he gives her money and you know says he, he, can, he can buy her freedom from um, What's his name? Arabin. But it just it makes me really sad that like she felt like comfortable there and she'd start to start to make friends there and then that's the only place that she's really been able to make friends. And then she has to go back to Arabin and you know, she's she's now sort of like eighteen. And she's been through a lot, and you you do get that. And I, you were kind of losing the more arrogant side of her at this point, and get we're getting more of the side that I like from her from Throne of Glass. So that right at the beginning, I really disliked her, and we were slowly like chipping away at the arrogance. But she still does constantly talk about how she's the best in Ireland, and I still sort of think she needs to tone it down a bit, like. She's been told she's the best, and yes, she is really good, but, you know, it just goes to show that when she came up against Ansel, she might, she might be the best in Ireland, but she's got 
you know, don't mean that she's the best everywhere. So, yeah, I, I feel with that, she needs to sort of like tone it down a bit, but, you know, it is what it is. She's still teenager, she's got like the bravado. But I do like the fact that the master was giving her this money and he, and he said, well, tell Arabin that, you know, we don't, that we, that we take care of our disciples. Um, and I wanted him to just be like, tell him that I'll get him if he don't, <laughs> but he wouldn't do that. But anyway. The next one is The Assassin and the Underworld. And we've got two books left. <sighs> we've got two books left. And pain is coming. I'm, I'm not ready. And I'm probably going to be in this position for the rest of the book, but I'm comfy, okay? And I'm feeling sorry for myself today, so we're just going to go with it. I've just read The Assassin in the Underworld and I'm scared to read the last book! <laughs> in this one we really, really see how evil Erebin is and just how he gave zero fucks about Selena despite being, like, yeah, what she did, what her and Sam did in the beginning about messing up his trade agreement, it, it, it was bad, like, it would have been a slap in the face from when I get it. I get it, I get it, I do. But it, she's, that's their way of like rebelling. <laughs> when kids go through the rebellious stage, that was her way of rebelling. It was a costly way of rebelling, but still. But if it spent nine years like, raising her, I just, I feel like, and then obviously he beat her. We find out that Sam has been pining over her for the whole summer. And that he basically said that he would do anything not for Arabin not to hurt Selena again. And he sacrificed himself for her in the in a way. But obviously didn't want to leave because she was still away and he didn't know she was okay. He finally admits that he loves her, but this this book really does like it doesn't focus on their romance but whenever they're mentioned you can tell that the tension's building and you can tell that it's that it's gonna end that way. If you haven't read this before you you can still tell that it's either gonna be that he admits he has some feelings for her. Not necessarily love, like when I first time I read it, I didn't think it was gonna be that he loved her for that long, but I did think that he would say, I've been like getting feelings for you, like, I've been attracted to you for so long, blah blah blah. And you could tell that she was slowly becoming attracted to him and she was thinking about him more and it was sort of, it was a reciprocal thing. And when the whole thing with the, like the guy trying to kill her and him rescuing her, that bit was just like, don't, oh, I really wanted something, like, screw some, like, do you know what I mean, like, Grr. I love Sam. Is he gonna kill me with just like a whoosh of his hand? Yeah, just like a flick of dagger at me. Like, Bleh. But uh, despite that, you know, murderous side to him, he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> I just, oh. Uh, it's such a tragic history with his mum and the fact that she was a cause and in her, her end wasn't great. I just really enjoyed this one. Up until this was probably my favourite one, favourite story so far. The one bit that did sort of like get me full on in the chest, there was a couple of bits actually, when Selena just blindly still followed Erebin, I was kind of like, I was always suspicious of him not doing anything to her or punishing her even more when she came back. And I was always suspicious of the fact that he gave her this job to do. But the fact that she didn't find out, like, she still went through it with it. I was thinking that maybe, just before she killed the guy, that she was going to find out the truth. But then it fully went through with it and then she killed him and then afterwards she found out. And the bit that was gutting was that she'd... It was kind of like she'd gone through all that in the beginning to save these slaves in the first book and then she'd ended up killing a guy 
that was doing what she was doing on a larger scale and trying to find safe houses for these people and was actually like trying to be a good guy and I think for me that would make me question everybody else that he'd sent me after like was this a punishment for the fact that it cost her it could cost him a lot of money and it does sort of allude to the fact that that would be the case but it would also make me question how many times have they sent me off to kill someone just because they wanted them out of the way not because they were a bad person and I think that would totally mess my head not gonna lie not that I would turn into an assassin or anything I'm just saying if I was in her position but the whole and the reason I knew this wasn't gonna end well was because we are on four out of five and I know there's like a full run of class series after this at this point when I'm reading this and we just got the happy ending or happy ending where she's finally moved out she's freed herself she's freed Sam they're saying like they're gonna stick together he's said that he's loved her multiple times she hasn't actually said it back to him yet but we know that she's feeling it and it's it's but it's four out of five so in my mind i knew something was coming that was gonna stir some shit but again for me at this point i didn't know what happened in the throne of glass i just knew that there was someone called selena in it and there were a couple of other names that i knew that had been mentioned other than that if it's a series that I'm really interested in and I don't know anything I don't know anything about it, I try and stay away from everything to do with that series, regardless of how old it is. So I know that the series is really old, but before I went into it, I didn't I knew there was Selena, I knew there was Dorian, I knew there was Kale, and I heard Rowan being thrown around. Um Manon, is Manon that? Or is Manon in Manon? I'm sure. Anyway, I heard names being thrown around but I didn't know what the connections were with each other. I didn't know the story and the plot line of Throne of Glass. I I was very, very, very blind going into this. <laughs> like, so I knew that something bad probably happened in this last one. But I didn't know how bad it would be. So I'm going to take a break. <laughs> get another brew. Calm myself. And I'm going to be finishing this book today. And probably, should I really be going to bed after torturing myself with this last book? No. So what I'm going to do after this is probably read something by fucking fresh fabulous, like a really fun contemporary. Um, but you don't need to know this. This is a spoilery assassin's blade vlog. And yeah, my thoughts on Selena as this has progressed. I like her more near the end. I think when I first read this, because I was so focused on how arrogant she was at the beginning her character development throughout this i kind of ignored quite a bit i thought that her and sam were cute at one point but i did switch off when it came to her character development which is a me issue and i can see that she has had quite a bit of a character development throughout these five well four novellas so far so yeah um i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna be back at the end to give my full thoughts, feelings and ponderances, and star rating. We are here again, friends. We are here again for the final check-in. <laughs> Did I cry? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm not okay. It's, it breaks my heart every time I think about it. Every time I think about it, it's... It's horrible. <laughs> she didn't even say she loved him. Although she knew that she loved him. We knew that she loved him. He knew it. We all knew it. But she didn't say the words. <laughs> because I knew it was coming as well. <clears throat> and then to find out that Erebin... Although I already knew. But to like reread that Erebin set it all up. So that... Sam would be killed and but his whole plan was that Selena would you know go charging and save and like try and like get get revenge and then he would like be her saviour 
and break her from the prison and you know she would go back to him his plan messed up as well because she opened the mouth and the king decided to send her to Endovia instead and that is where the Lord of Glass starts is when she's in Endovia <sighs> it's horrible just the way that Endovia is described the king the way he's described just the fact that she is a broken human she just you could tell that at the point that Sam she finds out that Sam is actually dead dead there's something that breaks in her that you could tell from reading the rest of the series that that's just never never healed she'll never get over it she'll blame herself and it's just horrible but also so good <laughs> And I think was she was she like 19 when she wrote these stories, even though they came out after the actual Throne of Glass series. Um, but I think I'm sure someone said that she was like 19. And anyway, anyway, and it doesn't really matter, but this was five stars. I think I gave it four the first time I read it. I think. I'll go back and check, but I this is a five star. 100%. So, first three books have been five stars for me. I'm just hoping that it continues because I've heard that part way through it can get a bit rocky and it, it tends to be sort of like the middle books where people's star ratings have differed so we'll see, we'll see what happens but it isn't late, what time is it? Will you see this? <laughs> before the you won't see this before the live show the live shows tomorrow so this should be up just after the live show so I will put the link to the live in the comments in the description so that you can actually see the discussion between Tori and Smash and see their spoiler filled discussion about Assassin's Blade but now that I've finished it I'm gonna message Tori and I'm gonna be like how did you feel this this had to happen for the future story to happen, if that makes sense. There, w there would have been no point in her going to Indovi with Sam and, and whatnot, because obviously then we wouldn't have got the situation, we wouldn't have got the storyline that we did for the for the Throne of Glass series. But that <sighs> it's just horrible. <laughs> I didn't want Sam to die. I would rather Erebin have been killed by the hands of Selena or Sam for just being a ruthless motherfucker just I'm not okay I'm gonna head off now and if you do like me and you wanna see more of me please like and subscribe to all the good stuff and if you're here and you wanna let me know you don't have anything to say please leave a black heart so much appreciated and until next time enjoy whatever you didn't watch it or do it and I will see you all very very